What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Jeff Benjamin with 9 to 5 Mac. This is iOS 14.5 Developer Beta 6, just dropped today. Also, the public beta is available for public beta users as well. So, let's talk about what's new. One of the new things relates to actually the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. That's actually what I have in hand right here. This is the regular iPhone 11 and what's new pertains to battery health. So if you go into settings and you go to battery, you're going to see under the battery health section, a new little heading under there. So let's go ahead and open up battery health and you'll see exactly what I mean. See right there at the top important battery message. And this directly pertains to recalibrating that that crucial battery health information such as maximum capacity and peak performance capability. So this message shows up at the top of the battery health section of the settings app automatically. So there's really nothing that you have to do if you install iOS 14.5 beta 6 on your iPhone 11 that's what you're going to see at the top of the screen. Now, if you tap to learn more, that's going to take you to an Apple support page that's specifically about recalibrating battery health reporting in iOS 14.5. But you may be asking yourself, why did Apple do this? Well, the reason behind the change is to address inaccurate estimates of battery health reporting that occurs for some users. And this inaccurate reporting, this bug basically results in unexpected battery drain behavior, or in some instances, reduced peak performance capability. And that happens pretty rarely though. And it's important to note that even if you do have inaccurate battery health data, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem with the actual battery inside your iPhone. So how does Apple handle this? Well, it handles it via recalibration. Now, this isn't just some magical thing that happens instantly, but it happens during regular charge cycles. In other words, this is a process that could take some time up to a few weeks even. So you're not going to see any stats change during the actual recalibration, which again could take a few weeks and peak performance capability might be updated, but this may not be noticeable for most users. So if you had a battery degradation message prior to installing iOS 14.5, that will be removed after updating to beta six or higher or the public version of iOS 14.5 once it's officially released. So in many cases, the battery will be recalibrated, you'll be good to go, and that message at the top of the screen will be removed. That's an indication that the process is completed. But if the battery health reporting indicates that your battery health has significantly degraded, a battery service message will appear. And in a smaller number of cases, recalibration may not be successful at all, and a new battery service message will appear. If that occurs, you can take your phone to Apple or an authorized service provider, and they'll replace your battery free of charge, restoring full performance and capacity. Now, keep in mind, like I mentioned, this is only available for the iPhone 11 era devices. So even older devices are not compatible with this new battery recalibration feature. But of course, that all could change in future updates. So I'm really interested to hear what our iPhone 11 owning viewers think about this whole thing. Have you received any sort of error messages within the battery health section of the settings app? And if so, what do you think about the recalibration features in 14.5? All right, so let's get to the really exciting news about 14.5 beta 6. And that is, of course, the addition of two new Siri voices for American English. Now, another change that iOS 14.5 brings to the table is the ability to select your Siri voice during the initial setup process of your iPhone. So you'll see a prompt that looks like this asking you to select your Siri voice if you're not already logged in with iCloud, which will sync your Siri voice selection, your, your preferred Siri voice selection automatically. So I didn't log into iCloud during setup specifically so I could show you this. Check it out. So obviously the two new voices are voices two and three. 
Now you can also find these new Siri voices within the Siri section of the settings app. So we'll go ahead and open up settings and then go down to Siri and search. And then you will also see their Siri voice. Now this is assuming you have your language set to English as I do here. I have it set to United States. And then at the top, you have your variety, which used to be called accents in prior versions of iOS, but now it's called variety. And there you can choose between the different types of English accents. So you have American, Australian, British, Indian, Irish, and South African. Now below that, you have your different voices. It used to be just called male and female. Hi, Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. But now you have voices one through four. So the point is you no longer have a female Siri voice as the default voice when setting up for the first time. You actually get to choose whether you want a male or female voice. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So these two new voices, voices two and three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Sound significantly different. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So one and four are your Hi, originals. I'm Siri. And two and three are the new ones. I, I really like the sound of two, especially. I think that'll probably be the one that I go for uh, when I use Siri going forward here in iOS 14.5. So I'm interested to know how you guys and gals feel about these changes. Do you like the fact that Siri no longer defaults automatically to the female uh, assistant voice? Uh, do you like the two new voices as well? Voice two and three. Do you like the way they sound? Obviously they sound different. There's different inflections, different pacing a little bit. And these new voices use source talent recordings that are run through Apple's neural text to speech engine, which make it seem more organic, more natural. And it doesn't seem like the phrases are canned or anything like that, but they're actually generated as needed on the fly. And that just makes it sound more realistic. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. What do you guys think? Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Yeah, those new voices definitely sound better in my opinion. But like I said, not perfect. Listen to how Siri responds when I ask it to tell me a story. Okay, let's hear the bear side of the Goldilocks story and you get to choose the ending. One morning, mama, Papa and baby bear came home from work to find that baby bear's breakfast was gone. Someone's been eating my porridge, cried baby. But you don't even like porridge, said Papa. It's the principle of the thing, said baby, who was very clever for her age. Yeah, still pretty rough around the edges. Let's listen with the new female voice. Okay, let's hear the bear's side of the Goldilocks story, and you get to choose the ending. One morning, Mama, Papa and baby bear came home for a walk to find that baby bear's breakfast was gone. Someone's been eating my porridge, cried baby. So yeah, still quite a while to go before it starts sounding totally natural, but I think progress is definitely being made. Now, all these new Siri voices are also available on the HomePod beta, which I have right here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just play that back real briefly. So let's go ahead and do that. Tell me a story. Yeah, we're not gonna go through all that again, but the same thing can be found on other betas like on the Apple Watch as well. So let's go ahead and play those back and see how those voices sound here on the Apple Watch speaker. Sounds pretty good to me, but as we've been covering for weeks and weeks now, iOS 14.5, it's just chock full of new features. It's a pretty big release. Uh, just think of all the stuff we've talked about in the past, like the ability to have the swipe gestures within the music app for things like queuing or all the new emoji characters that are available in 14.5, or like the ability to unlock your iPhone with your Apple Watch while you're wearing a mask. Stuff like that you probably already forgot about because it's been so long since those features debuted with those initial betas. But now we're in beta six, in iOS 14.5, I feel like the release is right around the corner. I mean, it has to be because we're on the precipice of iOS 15. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Are you excited about the upcoming release of iOS 14.5? Let me know down below in the comment section, thumbs up 
you appreciated this video and please subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.